BAMF. No, that's not an acronym or some sort of weird noise, but rather the name of the very first national park established within Canada. Situated in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, Banff has earned a legendary reputation as one of the world's most beautiful and awe-inspiring destinations. For over a century, tourists and travelers have marveled at the park's towering and majestic mountains, its endless tracks of deep primeval forests, and resplendent valleys hiding lakes and rivers the color of emeralds or sapphires. Even today, it remains a place where one can lose themselves in the vast, unspoiled wilderness of the Canadian Rockies and take part in the ancient romance between man and nature. Instinctively, I wanted nothing to do with it. With air conditioning, pizza deliveries, and computer games long having made nature obsolete, I have often mocked those who choose to immerse themselves within it. And yet, in the spring of 2021, with the COVID-19 crisis seemingly about to end, yet that end still frustratingly distant, even I could not resist the thought of escaping into the wilds. But if I was going to spend some time with nature, I would need every manner of luxury, and preferably some sort of large building to seal myself within. Luckily, Banff was one step ahead of me. In 1886, the Canadian Pacific Railway, which I assume hates nature as much as I do, started construction on the Banff Springs Hotel. When it was completed, it represented a lone bastion of civilization in an otherwise hostile wilderness, until it burned down in 1926. Yet heroically, unwilling to let nature have the final word, a larger, stronger building was created, with additional blocks and wings added over the ensuing decades. As one of Canada's Grand Railway Hotels, the structure was originally part of a great line of fortresses protecting Canada from the wildling tribes and white walkers that once existed in the lands of always winter. However, since the end of the long night and the absorption of the Night's Watch into the RCMP, it's become a charming hotel where people are free to enjoy trees and mountains and such from a safe distance. And all without getting mauled to death by wild animals or your dress shoes covered in dust. Yes, the Banff Springs Hotel would be the ideal mountain retreat. With my destination chosen, I enlisted the services of Julia, the Templin Institute's employee of the month and foremost indentured servant. In addition to shipping out the Institute's Patreon rewards, Julia has also proven herself capable of wearing clothing, and sometimes possesses a level of warmth and humanity rivaling even the most expensive mannequin. If she was going to join me on my wilderness retreat, she would need to earn her passage by modeling the Templin Commissary's newest line of fashionable yet budget-friendly merchandise imported directly from the Antares Confederacy. When we entered the boundaries of the Banff National Park, the rocks, trees, and sky were all there as promised, but I couldn't help but feel distracted. I had received a ton of emails from the Banff Springs Hotel, and every single time they kept referring to themselves as the Castle in the Rockies. We look forward to welcoming you to the Castle in the Rockies. Experience the Castle in the Rockies. Would you like to pay an extra $300 for a private s'mores package in the Castle in the Rockies? At first, I thought this was some sort of marketing slogan, until I recognized this phrase for what it actually was, a challenge. Across its history, no force had ever successfully laid siege to the Banff Springs Hotel. Not the Ottomans, not the Carthaginians, not even the Holy Roman Empire. Their success had made the hotel arrogant and overconfident. Well, that was about to change. I would succeed where Alexander, Charlemagne, and Rommel had all failed. Our trip now had three primary objectives. Number one, relax and unwind. Number two, force Julia to model merchandise for the Templin Commissary. And number three, raise the banner of the Templin Institute atop the highest battlements of the Banff Springs Hotel. Key to the success of all three objectives would be getting the lay of the land. For this, the Banff Gondola was uniquely situated. From atop the great heights of Sulphur Mountain, I could develop a battle plan, take some good photos, and maybe grab a grilled cheese. But while the ride to the summit was majestic, we immediately ran into some problems. What no one could have predicted was that photographing merchandise on top of a mountain in winter isn't quite as easy as you might think. <laughs> Julia, for God's sakes, keep your hair together. 
Despite her constant complaints that it was minus 20 and she was freezing to death, and that you can't just wear a t-shirt in this kind of environment, I graciously permitted Julia to eventually come inside and join me for lunch. She could pay me back later. And besides, I had bigger issues on my mind. So far, the trip had achieved nothing. And worse still, I was about to discover why no one had ever successfully conquered the Banff Springs Hotel. From the outside, it's easy to mistake just how enormous the Banff Springs Hotel is. On the inside, however, you are immediately trapped in an endless labyrinth of hallways, ballrooms, and sitting areas, all adorned with creepy portraits and chandeliers. This is said to be the most haunted hotel in Canada. which is to say that it's not haunted at all, and some people are just stupid. We spent hours exploring the various great halls and gatehouses, spiral staircases and outdoor terraces, probing for weaknesses. Yet we only managed to cover a small fraction of the complex. An entire army might have been lost within its depths. And the idea that we could conquer this place and raise our flag with just the two of us felt increasingly outlandish. But there were signs of hope. In their overconfidence, none of the gates had been barred, no ditches dug or moats filled. The castle's garrison had also been drastically reduced by COVID, and those who were left seemed more interested in helping guests than pouring buckets of burning pitch on them. But most crucially, our reconnaissance had yielded some critical information. To successfully capture the Bamp Springs Hotel, our flag would need to be raised here, somewhere atop the central tower. And it just so happened that there was a single room located in that central tower, the Royal Suite. Unrivaled in its opulence, under normal conditions, a couple of schmucks like us wouldn't have been allowed anywhere near it. But this was 2021. The hotel industry was in disarray, and beggars couldn't be choosers. How we actually managed to snag that accommodation, I honestly don't know. The hotel staff seemed as confused as we were, but snag it we did, and the door to our conquest was now open. As the mastermind and leader behind the whole operation, it was only natural that I assumed the duty that carried with it the greatest danger, observing the whole affair from the ground. And so, with a high-powered telescopic lens, I risked both life and limb, directing Julia as she climbed out onto a rickety balcony and planted the Templin flag. The wind was angry that day, but against all odds, the flag was raised, and ultimate victory was ours. But of course, mostly mine. It was a tremendous moment, to triumph where all others had failed. I am not ashamed to say that I was overcome by emotion, seeing our banner blowing in the mountain air. And just for the hell of it, I also made Julia raise the Antares Confederacy's flag. It was a full morning of flag raisings. But to the victor go the spoils. With the castle now ours, I seized the opportunity to fully tour the royal suite. I felt like a Bolshevik radical entering the deserted halls of the Winter Palace. Accessible only by private elevator, the royal suite is a gigantic two-story penthouse with endless views of the surrounding mountain valleys. It is most famous for having hosted King George VI and Queen Elizabeth I during the 1939 Royal Tour of Canada. Since then, it has welcomed presidents, prime ministers, diplomats, and dignitaries, as well as Scarlett Johansson and Nicolas Cage, apparently. In light of this esteemed company, I couldn't help but think that the image of the king and queen directly above our tube of Wendy's Baconator Pringles was an apt metaphor for our presence here. But alas, despite the endless luxury, we still had a job to do, something forgotten by my habitually lackadaisical assistant. 
Jesus, Mary and Joseph, have you ever seen such a lazy assistant in all your life? She's supposed to be helping me with the photography. And what is this instead? She's just hiding under the blanket. Oh, the Edinburgh Dial's gonna be weeping over this one for sure. With Julia convinced to do some work for a change, we set out onto the balcony, which proved far more amenable to taking promotional photographs of our top of the line merchandise. Wearing a hoodie and staring out into the distance all while keeping your eyes open isn't easy, as Julia repeatedly proved, but this was nothing that couldn't be overcome by my insightful and considerate directing notes. No, more intensity. More. More. More! So dedicated was I to the process, I even utilized the surrounding environment to ensure that Julia and our merchandise weren't simply acting, but living and reacting within the moment. Just like that, I had accomplished another one of my objectives. All that was left was to celebrate, relax, and unwind. To start, I was going to light the biggest fire the North had ever seen. Why is only the one side of the fire on fire? Turns out lighting a fire is difficult, so instead I drank and watched Godzilla 1985 in the bathroom. That was the way it was meant to be seen, after all. I even managed to eventually get that fire lit, even if it took every napkin, flyer, and spare bit of paper we had. And so, as I watched the sun set over Banff from the private balcony of the Royal Suite, I realized that objective number one had also been accomplished. In many ways, my conquest of the Banff Springs Hotel was a classic tale of survival. A lone pioneer, forced to brave the wilds and endure the torments of nature, Armed with nothing but his wits, his courage, a luxury hotel suite with a personal concierge, and a surly assistant. But against all odds, survive I did. And it is no exaggeration to say that I came back a changed man. Rougher around the edges, with a spark of danger in my eyes. I knew then, as I know now, that whatever future trials I might endure, a part of me would always remain within the Banff Springs Hotel, and it would fill me with a strength. I never knew I had. Jesus Christ. I should have worn shoes. My feet are freezing.